Hi, I'm Will Friedle, and welcome to Painters Guild. You are joining us on a pretty special episode because while we spend most of our time working on minis, working on our painting techniques, today we are gonna build a model from scratch, work on terrain, and do some whole new techniques. Fun episode, join us. So it is time to meet our master, well, I would say master painter, but actually I would say master builder for this episode. So please help me welcome Knox Burf. Come on in, have me. a seat. Yeah. In our leather back chairs. This is very nice. Thank you very much as we learn all about this. you, yes. yeah. So uh, I think the first thing we gotta do is look at this. This is what we're gonna be doing today. The Baba Yaga hut, am that I is saying correct. that right? Yes. We're no gonna relation be... to Jabba the hut? No relation to Jabba the hut. The Baba Yaga hut is a, a Russian folklore. Okay. And you know, there's a witch that runs around in a hut on chicken legs. Your producers called and they were like, well, you know, we'd like to do terrain. And terrain can be kind of static and I didn't want to give that impression. Okay. So I thought, well, let's put some chicken legs on it. Sure. And see what we can get out of it. I think that makes a lot of sense. That's normally where I go. Yeah, I mean, right to chicken legs. Yeah, it's like, let's it's throw safe, chicken legs on it, call it a day. Wow. Uh, we're doing smaller versions of these. Okay. So instead of doing the full hen, we're gonna do the chicklets. The chicklets, so Bobby Yaga Jr. Yeah, they're gonna be chick huts. Okay, that's chick huts. I think that's I like that. I like it. that as officially the name. Yeah, we're doing chick huts. We should get legal on the trademarks now. That's a ch <laughs> chick huts TM. How did you start doing stuff like this? Well, I, I've been in the gaming world since I was about 11 years old. Really? Yeah. Doing what? Um, in the small town that I grew up in, there was a a, a game store called the Wizard's Keep. So. Uh, immediately, I kind of like learned about what Dungeons and Dragons was, right? And started just grabbing anything I could and painting it. That's and, awesome. Yeah, and it took me a while, but then I started to build my own set pieces, my own little additions to things. So the, let me let me try to get this yeah. straight. You rolled your first natural twenty. Yeah. D and D was in your heart, like it is for so many. Of so us. many. That's the way right? it works. And then the the regular minis you were getting were not enough, so you started to build accompanying pieces. <laughs> to the games you were getting. Well, back then, you know, the thing about it was was that terrain wasn't really something that you could buy. Oh, okay. So you could get the miniatures, you could get the paints, um, and they, they, yeah, there were a few pieces. I think there were a few foam castles out there. Right, right, right. But there weren't really any other pieces that really went with it. You remember the first one you did? I think, if I'm, if I'm correct, I was just building the little cottages because it was only four walls and a roof and then covering them with broken popsicle sticks. Now, to be honest with you, that whole process is not too different than this. Really? Is. Okay. Right. So this is just the, the master version yeah. of the popsicle sticks and milk cartons. Yeah. I okay. mean, if you've been to preschool, you probably know how to do this. Okay. I finished most of preschool. Okay. So uh, you think we're going to have an opportunity to get close to this? I think we're going to nail it. Okay. So, hey, let's smock up. So once again, we are smocked, locked, and ready to rock. And I don't know if you guys notice here on the table, but it looks completely different than a normal episode. It looks, if I'm honest, like uh, like an arts and crafts kind of store. It is absolutely an arts and crafts so, kind of situation. I'm so. psyched to figure out what we got to do here. So walk us through it, Knox. What do we got? So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to build a base. And uh, to do that, I brought us a couple pieces of insulation foam. Sweet. This stuff is great because it's a very dense foam. Uh, but it's very lightweight. Okay. And so you can carve into it, and it makes great rocks and great okay. like, structures. Interesting. So uh, you see, you see, this is the difference between artists and people like me. Is you look at this and see rocks. Yeah. I look at this and go, man, am I gonna fill my entire recycle bin with this stuff? Don't waste anything. Like you should start I'll, saving everything. If you're serious oh, about this. my wife's gonna love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Have her give me a call. I'll explain it to her. You want my wife to uh, call you? We're yeah. not starting on the best foot here now. Well, I mean, I just meant like for about Have the recycling. My, Have program. your wife give me a ring. You know what I'm saying? All right. What do we got? So we have a knife, and what I've done is... Uh, <laughs> so we have a knife. <laughs> we're getting to that point now. This is a carpet blade, and I put it out probably further than you should for safety. That's and always the best way it's to do it. First way to do it. Find out where it's safe, and then go And then if we farther. have like just the general idea of kind of the shape that we want. Does it matter the shape, or is it all just it, kind of preference? Circular, you know, something okay. like that. Just, just, just Or we could do a square. So I'm going about halfway through the foam there. Okay. And then, watch this. Oh yeah, the score and so snap. Just, just score and snap. You've done this before. I love, no, I just know the term. And then I'm taking the knife and I'm going across the uh, foam block and I'm just chipping away to create a base form. I want you, you to take this and do the same thing if you don't okay. mind, Will. So let's halfway through. Yeah. 
We're gonna set it and score and forget it. Yeah. Nice, easy peasy. And then we're chipping now it's away. Just kind of whatever you want to do with it. You want it to look like kind of the earth, you know? Okay. This is uh, already really fun. Yeah, right. I could just do this all day. Is well, that weird? it's already looking great. Yours looks better than mine at this point. Well, I'm guessing that's gonna be the last time we say that today. <laughs> The next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this armature wire here. Okay. And we're gonna use the armature wire to make the legs of the chicken. There's a, there's a trick to this if you're doing chicken legs. If you're doing- There's literally a chicken leg trick? Is that, <laughs> I, that's Well, I just thing? made it up. Okay, <laughs> there you go. It's so now there like is a trick. I just made it up, but- there, Yeah. Is there a, a specific length we wanna go? This is probably enough for both legs. So if you, if okay. you double that up- Okay, yeah, so I gotta go from- Clip from that. From this end here. Oh, no, see, I have two. Hey. That's one way to do it. Thank you. No, here we go. All right, it's so. It's not the right way, but no, it is a way to do it. It's not the right, and chicken leg. Oh, it's so done. So I'm gonna go back with here-ish? Yeah. Like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not rocket science, so, I mean, you, we can always adjust. All righty. And if you watch what I'm doing here, I'm just twisting. And so what we're gonna end up doing with this is make the uh, base for a leg. You go to about halfway on that, okay. cut it, and then we'll use the other part of this for the other leg. Is that? That's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, you're a pro. Now you're going to want to do another one. We need two of these because uh, two, of these. two okay. legs, you know? Uh, now, do you start with chicken legs or do you do the legs of other animals as well? I, I think that we're starting with chicken legs. Okay, cool. We could maybe move over to horses eventually. Horse legs would be interesting. You never know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you could need a much put... bigger wire. So, all right, you got the... Uh, yeah, so you, it, it, once you get your so, two legs... So we're, are we, good, are we good with these? Yeah, those are actually excellent legs. The thing about these, this technique is actually also how you'd make a tree. Okay. So that That's is something know. that has been around for quite a while in the hobby community. Taking wire, making an armature out of it, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use green stuff, which is your new best friend. Is that really what it's called, green stuff? Green stuff, Okay. Yeah. And so you take these two portions, and you take equal amounts of them, mix them together, and it forms... Like the bomb in Die Hard 3, where you needed a little bit of thing, a little bit of... Uh, it is uh, an epoxy putty, so when the two parts form together, it forms a bright green color, hence the name. Okay. And then the green material can be sculpted, it dries without baking or anything like that, and then it retains a little bit of flexibility. Uh, if you look at that, it's gonna go into your foam here. You can bend a little point here okay. if you want. And we're just gonna stick that in. And the, you have uh, a little bendiers as well. Yeah. You can kind of just make it into a shape that you feel is appropriate for you. Or for chicken legs. Or for chicken legs. I mean, as long as it's a chicken leg type shape, I think we're good here. We're gonna use this little loop here, and if you don't have one, we'll make one. But I'm gonna use that to set the house on. So then take your two, Yes. Okay. And by the power, their powers combined. By the power of Grayskull. No. All right. So I've got the legs ready for my job of the hut. Is uh, this kind of what we're looking for? Yeah. Yeah. So just bend this down so it's flat a little bit. Think about something having to rest on it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. It doesn't look as good as yours, but I think it's there. No, it's My chicken it's, can it's also have work. had problems. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> so. So we're greening it up? Yeah. Okay. So you can take the plastic off of those guys, and then we're just going to cut. Oh, it's so thicky. Yeah. Well, it's gonna get a little stickier too, and I've got a trick for you for that. Okay. So we're gonna wanna cut equal parts. Don't pull so much that you don't think you can use it at once before it dries. Okay. And so then you have two parts that are about equal. Okay. And then- Oh my uh, God, it's stuck to my, oh my God. So, okay, let me show you the trick for that now. This is an aloe vera gel. Okay. And uh, we're gonna use that. You can just take a little bit and uh, put it into your paint tray. You're gonna use it on your fingers. So as soon as you do that, I think you'll see the difference. And then you can okay. start to work with this stuff without causing it to... Uh, so take a little on my fingers and then start... Yeah, making snakes. All right. That's good, Danielson. This is cool, yes. Yeah. So, okay, do you see what ha what's happening here with your green stuff? I do. It's becoming uh, like something you'd find at Burning Man. <laughs> yeah. uh, you need to keep kneading it and then maybe go back to the snake uh, technique. It, it, should it all be there. one color? Kind yeah, of we want it to be green. So mine is kind of green. I mean, how green do you want it to get? Uh, just a, a consistent green. Like you that. just kind of see the color. You got it. Go ahead and start to wrap it around your armature so that it holds it in place and starts to form the outer shell because we're going to want to cover all the wire in green stuff. Okay. So that it becomes what will be the flesh of the legs. Alrighty. So how are you doing? 
Good, I think. Good. How, how's that? How's that look? It's looking right. You can see that I started to put the uh, the back toe of the chicken foot onto this. Oh, okay. And that'll give you a little stability too, because it looks like you're falling back a little. Is that how the chicken foot goes in the back? Yes. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. So all the way around, like you all like over here, around. like yeah. do over here, and so stuff just take like little bits of the green stuff and patch that in. You can then just kind of rub your finger across it, and it's going to smooth out all the lumps. I think the left one looks good. I think the right one's a little screwy. Yeah, okay. I mean we can fix that. So just keep building up onto it. That's you're right. you're in the right zone. So it looks like we're getting pretty close. We're going to have to do some uh, triage. You're you're. Toes had kind of gone askew. We can make all that work. Okay. Um, you're going to need uh, the sculpting tools. Okay. Have you done any kind of sculpture work ever? Uh, a little bit kind of in, in school and yeah. a little bit in, uh, in camp. How are we triaging? If you look here, uh, there's like a little gap there. Yeah. You want to fill that in just a little bit because if you look at this one, the idea is just kind of roughly get them to the same place. Okay. Put a little more material in between those two toes. Gotcha. And then a little, a little bit little there back. on that back heel, you know? And that'll even help you if you want to straighten the leg out just a little bit more. If you're having trouble, you can start to push around with your tools instead of your fingers. And it's going to give you more control. And then any of the edges where two pieces of green <clears> stuff <throat> meet, you can start to smooth those out so that you create a joint. Where, where are you, what are you doing? So there? like here, you can see where there's that little. Oh, okay. And then I'll maybe take my tool and kind of Smooth it up. How do you cut it away is the question. Uh, would you like for me to show you? Yeah, please. Okay, so if you've got a piece like this, and I see, see what your problem is here. You've, you've tried to overcompensate when in fact, all you had to do. Oh, is just pull it off. Okay, like, gotcha, gotcha, so you gotcha. do the same yeah, on the other side, yeah, yeah. you should be good. So this is your first magic chicken hut on the show. It is certainly the first, hopefully not the last. You can actually, see you're kind of doing an, a, a, a reductive method, which is fine. If you do that and you press that down, then you can take little bits of green stuff, yeah. make the talon, roll it, and then add it on. That works. Like that. Yeah. See, that's cool. That looks great. I mean, I think that, you know, with practice, this is like anything else, right? Right, right, right. Uh, You've got to do it a few times before you really hit your stride. I think I may have determined that I'm, in fact, an additive sculptor. <laughs> and so that's going to be our base. Okay. And then we can set these aside for now. And uh, let's see. Yeah, yours looks okay. You it's, like. a, it's all right. See how it's like, see what he did here, how it's perfect. Yeah, that's kind of fun. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to meditate for a, a split second. Okay. And then we're going to bring in these pieces of foam. The little ones here. Yes. All righty. So I'm sure you've used hot glue before, right? I have. Okay. Not well, but I've used it. So you've got these pieces here, okay? Yeah. You've got five. And they're all roughly the same size. Find one that you like for the base. That's going to be the uh, center point where you're gonna put the other walls. Found it. Okay, so that's your floor. Okay. And then find one that you like for a wall. Okay. Match it up to the side there, like so. Gotcha. And then we're gonna just take a line of hot glue. Go along. Be careful. Hot glue burns are the sign of a true hobbyist. Okay. Every battle scar you earn here today, you should wear it with pride. Well, isn't the goal not to burn yourself? Yeah, but that doesn't happen with okay, hot glue. Okay, fair enough. Okay, and I take it where we then do other Walls. Other walls. Same thing, all the way around. You want to make four walls. They're not kidding when they say hot glue. It's not like warm glue. No, it's, it's hot. piping hot. Okay. You're just going to go all the way around. So when you get all four on there, uh, we'll do something else to kind of strengthen it. Because hopefully you'll be using this at D&D sessions. I guarantee you that if you dropped a, uh, a chicken hut on your D&D table, oh, yeah. you're, your players you're talking freak to freak out. Uh -huh. it, can't, it just keeps gluing to everything. Okay, you know what? I can't with this anymore. I know You're going to lose the blue. But I can't with this anymore. But the great thing about hot glue, too, is... The smell? Well, there's that. It's kind of fun. Is that when you when you uh, use it, if you need to reposition stuff, it peels off. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've noticed that you can also kind of slide a little bit, which is nice. The material that we're using for these walls, I pre-cut for us just for the, the use of this uh, tutorial. This is a black foam core. I okay. prefer black because if anything shows through, you don't have to worry about it. Right, makes sense if we're learning about when we prime minis too, is to prime them black. Yeah. At least at the beginning, because it hides some of your mistakes. We're gonna be putting um, our popsicle sticks and, and other pieces of balsa wooden things across as, as a wooden facing for this. And if there's a gap between some of that, it just yeah, kind of cares? adds to right, it. Right, right, right. You know? So I got my box. You got my your box. Magical mystery box of okay. mystery and magic. So then the next step is going to be to take the uh, triangular pieces. Okay. And we're going to just make the uh, support for the roof. Oh, and on the that's, side. Okay. That's going to go like that. You know, again, not a completely exact science. This technique can be used to build actual houses for terrain. 
So if okay. you, if I thought you, you meant houses to actually live in, like homes here I mean, in the valley. If you had large enough foam core, you could do I it. I think you could do that. I yeah. could do it. This is more fun than I should be allowed to have legally. No, no. I mean, this is how much fun you should be able to have legally. Now, I know that we're actually doing arts and crafts today, but while we're here, since we're doing arts and crafts, if you're still working on other painting projects, now might be a good time to jump to a pro tip. Take it away, Brian, but do it quickly. We got other things to do. Will, when you have zero skill and need magic straight out of the bottle, texture paints can really spice up terrain or bases. Here we have a number of bases, all painted with straight from the bottle Games Workshop texture paint. You can even add lumps of paint to create little hills or surfaces. For more advanced texturing, throw a wash on top and then dry brush the grit, and you can get hyper-realistic 3D effects. Back to you, Will. All right, hey. what's the plan? Okay, so this is the box that some of this uh, terrain material came in. You shouldn't waste it. Don't throw it away. You're gonna use the box too. We're using the box Sweet. to make the top of the roof. So I'm okay. gonna cut you a piece of this. We're going to cut, like it's measure awesome. and cut the size that we're gonna want for the top of the roof. Okay. There you go. So you can take a pen or uh, you can just mark it with uh, your mind. If you cut a little extra around the edge, that's gonna be an overhang. Like you're wrapping a present. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. So you can do it with your knife. You can do it with scissors I think if I'm you like. Do it with scissors. Yeah. And then what we're going to do is just figure out the size that we want for that roof and cut the cardboard. I'm just going willy nilly. And you know, it doesn't have to be symmetrical. In fact, I think it's probably not going to be as better fun. if it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that has now been cut. All right. So here's your roof. Okay. And if you kind of know where you want to go with it, the thing to do is kind of mark where you want the center point. Take an X-Acto knife. Okay. We're going to score it, so we're only kind of going about halfway through. You can almost just lightly draw a line. Okay. And once you do that, that's okay. it. And then you can put it on the top. You can trim it afterwards. I'm definitely going to need to trim mine. And then, you know, get the hot glue back out. Go along the, uh, the top of your building. Okay. And then we're going to uh, place the roof. And then I'm going to show you how to tile it. It sounds like we're doing like a home and garden kind of thing. It's, it's when like we come Bob back, Via. we're going to be tiling the roof, and if we're lucky, we're going to get to the backyard. <laughs> oh, I'm very happy with said structure. So you should be very proud of that because it looks great. And I kind of like the overhangs. It doesn't overhang too much. Yeah. Are you gonna, like, look you, at what I did. I screwed mine up. Look at so that overhang. Gonna, but you, uh, you cut your overhang off. Are you going to keep the overhang, or are you going to get rid of your overhang? You're getting rid I, of your I'm overhang. I'm getting rid of a lot of it, but I'm keeping some of it. That I don't wanna, now I want to get rid of some of my overhang. Well, I think you should make the overhang work for you. Like right here, I think, I think you're right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just test the water here. Oh it's man, you're already be, assembling. Well, we're just test fitting right now. Can I, can I try a chick hut? Try it, you should, yeah. Test fit it, see how it's going to sit on there. It's a little bit of a low rider, but I think it's going to work really well. That's kind of cool. It looks cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, can Blew I also a still... You can adjust as much as you want. Yeah. There you go. That looks great. How do you feel about that? Yay! This is really cool. Yeah. What I'm going to show you right now is how to make the tile. Oh, cool. Uh, that we're going to glue onto the top of, of that structure. Okay. So what I do is I cut strips. With the same cardboard that we just used for the Same cardboard as we just used. You could use different cardboard if you wanted to kind of differentiate it. It gives you actually a great effect if you do that. So like if we took the a piece of this stuff. Okay. and then cut one strip of there and like maybe alternated them. Okay. So I'll let you take those. You can use those on yours. So how many do we need? Depends on the sizing that you have decided on. Is this, is this good? That's pretty good. And what I'm doing is I'm just going through without cutting all the way. I'm just slicing these little gashes in there. And that's going to create our tiles. Okay? Okay. And then I'm rolling the tile up. So it creates kind of a flap. And I mean, you can do all kinds of wonky things to kind of separate them. Cut little notches out. You can remove entire tiles so it would look a little more ramshackle. And then you're just gonna do that a few times until you have enough to cover the top of your, your house. So wait, so I've cut them like yeah. this and then I roll them up? Roll, roll it. So like that. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And you can run Hot glue down the back edge, just half the top edge, the okay. top that you didn't cut, and then you can add it directly to your miniature. Sure. And then you're gonna work your way up to the peak, and when you're at the peak, uh, there's another little trick to do the cap. So I can alternate these if I'd like to, right? You certainly can. There we go. And are you gluing as you go? Or yeah, you, okay. should I not be? No, that's great. Notice that. I think that looks great. That's cool, yeah. right? And it's adding like depth to it that you're yeah. really gonna see when you put the paint on. 
And there are the cobwebs. And a webmaster, you're weaving your web. Okay. It's everywhere. It gets everywhere. It, it's Knox. everywhere. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like glitter. It's the uh, craft herpes of craft the world. herpes. Have you never heard this? I have never heard mm. of craft herpes. Glitter is craft herpes. Because you can't ever you can't get, get rid of it, and you don't remember how you got it. I mean, you may come to a point where you want to put some glitter on a miniature. I'm not going to judge you for that. I will never come to a point where I'm comfortable saying craft herpes. <laughs> That's, you keep saying it. That's a pull. So, I'm trying to get it's. You're it's trying, trying to get it around the tongue. Yeah, trying to get to get my head wrapped around it. But it's one of those things where I just see the doctor coming in and going, "It's not, <laughs> it's not good news. It's not bad news. It's fine." But you have craft herpes. And I'm so like, you just what? need to stay medicated. How can I have craft herpes? That's impossible. That glue looks so clean. Like, yeah. you know what I mean, my my house keeps doing one of these, and then I have to. We haven't really secured the house yet. Right. And the reason for that is is that we're gonna take. The um, the cladding. By the way, I burned myself so many times I don't even feel my fingers anymore. Okay, so I'm at the top of said building. So am I. And I'm look at that. We finished at the same time there. Um, it just gets everywhere. Can I uh, help? Like I don't have a tr I don't have a tip for this. Look at now. Just watch where the hot glue goes. Now my house is doing this again. <laughs> Mine hasn't moved, but I, you know. Gee, that's a wonder why. Mine hasn't moved. It's perfectly on there on its perfect chicken feet. Thanks for that, Knox. Let's just glue it into its base so that you don't have to deal with the, the slime. Okay. Just flip it over and then put your hot glue onto the joint there where it's already kind of connected and just let that really connect. Okay, creepy blow. Is this While a, staring at you. This is uncomfortable. How did the creepy blow come about? <laughs> I, to, I look, feel like now, there's a story there. No, it's just doing this. I don't think I need to do a creepy blow. I feel, oh, look. David Blaine. Is there a jack of diamonds in there? Yeah, this is not gonna, gonna stay. Why don't you take, this is called winging it. Okay. Take a piece of cardboard, take some hot glue, put it on either side, create a cradle, a cradle. And then glue this into that point where your wire is so that it holds it in place. Wow. Insta cradle. Yeah, whatever you've got. Fix it and make it work. All right, so there, okay. That's hopefully gonna hold. And now I'm gonna do a quick, can I get Did you the, do the top piece? That's what I'm doing right now. Okay, you need a little extra cardboard? Yeah, can you give me a... I think you could use that. And then uh, I'm, while you're doing that, I'm gonna tell you what's up next so that we can kind of push through it. I've got these popsicle sticks. Just clip the, sorry, uh, clip the tip. Laheim. You know? Wow, you know, this seems like really oil. actually kind of dangerous uh, there, Knox. So I'm just kind of roughly figuring out the size and letting it go. All righty, so now I need to... Okay, and now we want plenty. to get them this size? Yeah, like roughly the sizing that you're going to need to kind of go around. I'm going to kind of leave a rough uh, couple spots between there. Right, right, right. So I'm just going to cut a few pieces that I feel like are going to sell the... Uh, General point. So now that we're now we're boarding is, it up. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna cover this and put a pretty much start a at the top or the bottom. You can do either on this one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the hot glue, and then I'm just gonna run a little bead across. Uh, and again, keep little spaces between. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, I'm gonna do it. Uh, you could you could go all the way across if you wanted, but for me, I think I'm gonna make it look really kind of open and rough. Oh, so you're doing like, oh, and then I broke it. And then, then you could like put that there like, oh, somebody boarded it up. If you want for the front, you can just build a little doorway. Just leave a space in the center there. That is going to be your door. Is that all you're doing on the side? No, I'm going to add some more. I just moved over to the front to show you things that you could do. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what you did there with the broken boarded up. Just start snapping those little pieces. It's going to allow you to create just rough little edges that are going to look great, actually, when we're done, because it's going to look like the board's So this is the weathered. front here. No, it's okay. You know what? Try, try, try another way, if you really are hurting yourself. No, no, it's fine. I, I love it. <laughs> there you go. How's that look? It looks great. Um, so then you're going to want to put your side pieces in. Okay. And just, like, you can build that up however best works for you. Side piece. Side there you piece. go. Side piece. Right. Okay, so with this plank in place, I feel pretty good. We have a shack, we have our legs that are built out of green stuff, and we have a base and the roofing. That's awesome. Okay, you know what? I think that we are going to uh, stop there for today. 
We're gonna have to continue working here, and you should probably continue working at home too. But I think this is a good place to end for the day. Right. We've gotten a lot done, but it is it's time consuming. You're gonna be here next week to help I'll us out. I'll be here right? with you guys. Yeah. Okay, that's we'll awesome. This up. Thank you so much for joining us on Painters Guild. Remember, every great masterpiece started with a single brushstroke. Thanks. No, thank you. Just keep tiling.